After the Great Colon War folded, the rank and file of the Astro Ave Brigade were divided into traveling factions of settlers as the economy of their homeworld, Chirpus 7, collapsed during a military takeover from the Infernocorns. Many of these settlers took menial jobs as service people or farmers. The avian settlers learned to cooperate quickly with the generally benevolent Infernocorns. The Infernocorn government flushed out all foreign interplanetary conflict spanning entire galaxies. In spite of their peaceful nature, members of the once resilient Astro Ave Brigade are still summoned in times of uncertainty. This is a story of those often overlooked working class fighting Aves. It is a glimpse into the hardships of the browbeaten, bootlicking war heroes who yearn for a return to greatness in ungrateful circumstances. It is the gallant rise of the Galaxy Birds. In the Bokacha Belt, a science vessel is on a routine mission charting the stars until it meets an untimely fate with a mysterious yeasty entity. The burst of the warp thruster sets up a chain reaction in the space sandwich, causing it to deliver its young prematurely. Six months later, a jaded showman toils away in his galactic hippodrome. Fifteen years hauling these exotic creatures around? And only mediocre reviews of my show than all the intergalactic media. I've got no money, no women, and a bunch of empty cages since the big crack up at the uh, uh, the, 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 the Plutonian pot eating contest. What in the blue hell do you think you're doing? Get back in your cage. What in the blue boil was that all about? Do you think that running this farm is easy? Ah, oh, pink feathers, I need me a pint of barnacle duck vamp. What do you think my dead pappy would have said about all this? I can't believe I blew it in this field. Why'd you... My good old damn funk have to escape and fly away. There must have been more to life than this. Hello, Nazi, you old goat. Do you remember us? Ah, yes, my good sir. I remember you from oh so long ago when I purchased that turquoise big Klondike monkey from you. And it looks like he got another crown jewel after so many years. We got this little tack out in the Dutton Nebula. We'll offer him to you at a bargain price of 
600 Zap Tunes. How does a dealio sound to you? That seems like a hefty water Zap Tunes. Hmm. How does 450 Zap Tunes sound? That's my final offer. I think not, you cheap booger man. <laughs>
we've lost a massive amount of milk. I've never seen anything like this in all my time as a janitor of the spaceways. Papers posted, my flighty pink friend. You're our top sanitation agent in this sector of the galaxy, and no expense can be spared. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've had to use this. By the power of this silver ring, I urge you to step back and retreat to the teat that spawned your insatiable hunger. King Vagineer, my illustrious leader, a strange occurrence has just, uh, occurred. I can't believe it myself, sir, but an oversized, winged, mutant baby with laser-shooting tits has ravaged this facility and fled, taking with it a year's worth of our milk supply. Uh, oversized, winged, mutant? Baby? This is terrible, preposterous, and terrible. If what you say is true, we cannot have this go on for too long. The health benefits of lactose will be lost upon several hundred planets, maybe more. We have no contingency for something like this. If I may, sir, I've got my trusty old ship, the Gassy Commodore, parked here on Beanspan, and I could get in touch with my old war buddy, the great Close Fondue. A man of his cheesy glory would know what to do in this situation. We could track the baby down and stop it before there's any more damage done. Whatever you have to do to put a stop to this teething terror, Deltoid Flamingo, our entire star system is depending on you. What in the name of soiled pants is this all about? I can't believe it. He couldn't restrain a goddamn baby? Do I really have to babysit this bird brain? Oh well, I'll be on my way.